Hey guys, it's Lauren. Right off the bat, this is my editing Instagram and you should go follow it if you don't already. So today's video is either gonna be really fun or really frustrating for me. As you can tell from the title, today I'm gonna be trying different Instagram editing styles. Whenever I'm on Instagram, I always see these very different and distinct styles that are executed so greatly. So I thought to myself, how difficult would it be for me to try a completely different style? Today I'm gonna be trying five different styles. I'm gonna do an aesthetic style, a simple and smooth style, a warpy style, a cube 3D style, which I'm very nervous about. And lastly, the very popular Amelia's Bastard style. If you don't know who Amelia's Bastard is, you're living under a rock. I made a cute edit base, which I'm gonna use for the aesthetic, the simple, and the warpy styles. And then I made like a more edgy, like bad bleep. I need a bad bleep base. And I'm gonna use that for the 3D and Amelia's Bastard style. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the aesthetic style. I already cut my clips and added Twixter, Motion Tile, and Brightness and Contrast just to get that out of the way. So the song is Strawberry Kisses, so I made sure to download some like fruit backgrounds and some aesthetic overlays and backgrounds. I have like the little cheek blush overlay, have some Polaroid overlays, the paper tear overlays I think would be good. So let's get started. Okay, so for the intro, I think I wanna do like crumpled paper as the background because I see that a lot for like aesthetic edits. So I'm just gonna add that in. Please don't make fun of my desktop. <laughs> and then when I see it, the paper's like moving. So I think I have to add turbulent displace for that. And I have to do like that time 10 thing. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, no? Okay. And it should like wiggle in the background, which is pretty cool. And I'm gonna decrease the scale of the intro. So it's like that. That looks pretty cool. And I'm definitely gonna add some film damage because that is very aesthetic. So I'm gonna add an adjustment layer and do that. Let's see how it looks. That's cute. I mean, wait, let me add some wiggle to this adjustment layer. I feel like it needs to be more like fluid. Like aesthetic is very like, yes. So what I'm gonna do now is for this clip, I'm gonna mask it and have like strawberries come from the background and then I'm gonna do like a paper tear because that's very aesthetic, perfect mask. Okay, and then I'm gonna find this little cute strawberry overlay that I found, it's called Overlay CCP Fruit. So shout out to whoever uploaded this. Does that look as bad as I think it does? And then I'm gonna get the paper tear overlay. What is it? Paper tear center. So aesthetic, right? So I'm gonna have this zoom out and then I'm gonna do a little vertical shake and then I'm gonna do a squeeze warp and I'm gonna do some glow discs because I feel like aesthetic editors would want it to be like shiny. Oh God, not like that. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna add some blush on her cheeks here. So let me go into my overlay. I've had this for a while and I've used it maybe once. Where is it? It's like right here. Come on, does it get more aesthetic than this? Oh my god. Okay, let me go to background. What's that video I just downloaded? I'm just gonna use the cherry blossoms. That is good, the cherry blossoms. <gasps> so cute, okay. Okay, so another thing aesthetic editors do all the time is that like horizontal like or like vertical. Like, like you know what I'm talking about. <gasps> That's good, okay. And then we are going to do the butterfly. We've all been waiting for it. She's cute, she's iconic. We're gonna have this butterfly fly right across the screen just as she should. Cute, okay. Okay, so I'm just gonna finish this and then I'll come back to you guys when I'm done and I'll like rate my experience and we'll see how I did, so. See you guys on the other side. Okay, so I think it's like an hour-ish later and I just finished the edit, so here it is. Right. Name's Tris. <laughs> So I think I did an okay job of nailing down the style. It wasn't technically difficult, but it was a little bit hard coming up with the transition combinations. So I would rate my edit in this style like a seven out of 10. So in my opinion, some of the pros of this style are that it's very like vibey to watch. Like it gives you this very calm and like warm feeling. I feel like it's very easy on the eyes. There's not too much going on. Sometimes when an edit has too much going on, it's just like hard to watch. Now the downsides of this style. I think if you're sticking with the style, it can be very, very hard to find like overlays, PNGs, backgrounds and keep that all organized. Like I only had like five or six and I was super stressed out. And two, at least in my perspective as someone who's just trying out the style, I feel like it can get very repetitive. I feel like you have to be a very creative person to come up with a new aesthetic transition. But honestly, I love how the style looks. I just don't know if I would be able to like stick with it. All right, on to the next one. So since it's getting pretty late right now, I'm just gonna do the smooth, simple style because I feel like that one won't take too long and then I'll do the rest tomorrow. Okay, so for the intro, I'm just gonna do a simple zoom out and I'm gonna have it slide a little bit left and then slide to the right, but I have to make this really smooth. Sometimes it looks choppy when I do it. I think that looks pretty good. 
I'm gonna have this go into a rotation zoom out. I have to work on my zoom outs though because my zoom outs aren't always the best. Sometimes I go way too fast. And for this style, you kind of want everything to go like slow. Like I feel like a lot of my transitions are really fast. I have to not bring the knobs as close together as I want. I'm gonna make the zoom out larger than I usually do. I'm gonna do like 2.2. I usually do like 1.7 because I feel like with these smooth transitions, they have to be like larger values. No, I was not vibing this. See, this style, like it seems the easiest, but it's actually the hardest. Like, why is this harder than the aesthetic transitions? Okay, so for this, I'm going to do a little masking. Why does this look so weird? Now I'm gonna pre-compose it, and we're gonna do the 3D. And for this, I'm just gonna do a very, very simple solid background. It's low-key very hard to get 3D to look smooth. Like, oh my god, that stuff accelerates and it looks choppy. I think that's pretty good. Now what would come after this? Oh no, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do a slide down with the tile thing. Okay, I think my my graphs are not that bad. The normal graphs that I use for my edits are making it look pretty smooth. So I don't think I need to change up that much. But I have to just be like hyper aware of like what I'm doing because I'm not adding like anything crazy to it like warps or like anything like that. Always speed graph for 3D for me. I don't know, I feel like value graph goes way too fast. Okay, I think that's good. See, oh, you see like the, see Blur More Graphs has really gross mirror edges. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so I'm gonna continue struggling off camera this time and I'll check back in with you guys when I'm done. All right, so I just finished the edit. Here it is. Hi. Name's Tris. Strawberry So for scoring, I'm honestly gonna give it an 8 out of 10. But I just really like that clean, sharp look. So some pros to this style. Everyone enjoys watching a nice, clean edit. Kind of like the aesthetic edit, there's not too much going on. And it's just very calming to watch and very satisfying. And something else that I also noticed is that your render time is a lot shorter. Because you don't have as many like effects, overlays, backgrounds, etc. But there are always cons. Like I was saying before, you don't really have anything going on other than those base transitions, the scales, the rotation slides. So you have to make sure those are absolutely perfect. They cannot be even a little bit off. They have to be perfectly smooth. Like for me, if I'm doing some sort of crazy 3D transition, I'm gonna focus on how the 3D looks more than how my slide transition looks. But in this case, it was really hard for me to make it look super smooth because I had to really hone in on these core transitions that I usually whip together in like two seconds. So yeah, it's a lot more difficult than it seems. On to the next one. We're back and it's time for the third style. So this third style is a warpy style and I already think my style is pretty warpy. I love a good warp. I have a ton of presets, but I don't think I overdo it. So for this, I'm gonna try to use warps in all of my clips, make it very noticeable and prominent, and we'll see how it looks. Usually along with the warpy style are a lot of shakes, and I also have a ton of shakes. I think like the squeeze warp looks really good with a vertical shake, and the skew warp looks really good with a horizontal shake, so I'm just gonna use, you know, a variety. Okay, so I'm going to do first my vertical shake, my vertical shake with a rotation, and then I'm gonna do my squeeze warp. And I think I'm gonna try to make it more intense than I usually make it because mine is pretty subtle but I want it to be like war so my, right now it's 25 I'm gonna do like 32 I'm gonna have this go into a counterclockwise rotation which will also have a vertical shake and a squeeze warp and then I'm gonna have that go into a fisheye warp but I'm gonna make my fisheye warp like way more intense than I usually do I'm gonna do like the fattest inflate just y'all wait my vertical shake is really not that intense you can see it's really small but I'm gonna make this very long. I'm actually gonna add the same squeeze warp and I'm gonna make it even more intense because who's stopping me? Ben, let's do 35. Oof, that's intense. So usually at most my bend goes up to like 10 or 12 and then it goes to negative 70, but I'm gonna do negative 100. I think that's the maximum you can do. Okay, and pull this all the way up, full send. Do like that. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Okay, so I'm gonna have this one zoom out of course and I'm gonna add my horizontal shake which I'm gonna make a little bit more intense. Instead of 100, what should I do? 150. And then I'm gonna add one of my skew shakes, which my skew shakes are already pretty intense, so I don't think I'll have to adjust this. I'm gonna have this go into a slide down, and then the clip that comes out of the slide down is gonna have turbulent displaced, which 
to be honest i'm not that good at turbulent displays right like i have two turbulent presets but i have to adjust them for like 20 minutes each because it looks different on every single clip like it could look really good on one clip and then look absolutely gross on another okay i'm gonna add turbulence 2 to this next clip oof okay i'm gonna make the size smaller i'm gonna make the amount 60. Okay, it looks kind of ridiculous because of how it warps her face, but that's what I'm looking for. It's very intense, very everything. When in doubt, screen pump it out. Okay, I'm actually going to have this go into a split screen slide and have the split screen slide warp. Just add an adjustment layer with the shape. Can my current time indicator be like, not today, not today. So just like last time, I'm just going to finish this and then I'll meet back with you guys when I'm done. Okay, so I just finished the Warby edit and here it is. James right. Tris. My strawberry kisses. I go fly through the wind. So honestly, I would rate this style like an 8 or 9 out of 10. When I was editing it, I was like jokingly trying to make it really dramatic and I was expecting it to look absolutely awful because I made the shake so intense and all the warp so unnecessarily intense. But when I watched it back, I was like, this is kind of good. So let's talk about some of the pros of this style. I think it's very fluid and very smooth. Like warps just naturally give that effect to videos and I don't know, I personally love the look. Also, if you already have presets saved, this takes like a really short amount of time like 30 minutes at most but now let's get into the cons so if you don't have really good and solid presets basically the style is just a miss like <laughs> a complete miss because like i said the only thing you really have going on are those warps and shakes so if you don't have those warps and shakes nailed down your edit is not gonna look good another thing is that render time is really long and also the playback time is super slow so i'm finally done with this base and now we're gonna do the 3d and amelia's bastard styles with the other base okay so i'm back and ready to take a gander at amelia's bastard style so just like with fire I already have the base cut up and I added Twixter and a flash and I also added motion tile. So I'm kind of already halfway there because the style mainly consists of one, the flash, the velocity, and then also a lot of vignettes and a lot of scales and twitches. Twitches are the most important, which I'm okay at twitch, but I don't use it a ton. This may be a little bit hard, but... So from watching his edits, I think he uses transform instead of blurmo curves, which I usually use blurmo curves. I think it's a smoother look, but since he also uses twitch with it, it's just a completely different look altogether. So I guess I'm gonna do that. So this is a plot twist. So I'm just gonna start with doing like zoom outs that like fade out. And I'm still gonna go for value graph because I don't think that necessarily changes with using transform. Okay, now I'm gonna add my vignette preset. I'm actually very nervous about this. I feel like this is gonna look crappy because I hate using transform. I don't know how he makes it look so good. That's so choppy to me. Should I do twitch? I'm gonna do twitch with this clip, so I'm gonna try my first twitch. Okay, I'm gonna have this one go into a rotation zoom out. I'm gonna add the twitch now. I have a twitch preset already called twitch main, so I'm just gonna add that. Um, I don't think it's intense enough at all. I'm gonna go up to 70 and 20 for the speed, and we'll see how that looks. Okay, now I'm gonna do some border work. Okay, it's the output width. I'm gonna make it like 50, and then I'll have it go back to 100. And then not super fast, but not super slow either. Oh my god, you know I hate when it does that. I <laughs> don't know what to think about that. See, this is, look at how not smooth that looks. Did I? So I'm gonna do, this is gonna come out of screen pump and then this is gonna come out of a screen pump as well, but it's gonna be like the screen overlay thing. And then it's going to go into like a slide down or something like that, I don't know. See, the style doesn't consist of like super complex or hard transitions. Like these are basic transitions, but getting this twitch down and like just getting the look down is so hard. I just wanna make a good like twitch shake. Like, yeah, it's just not looking good for me. Okay, let me see. I think I have to make it more intense, right? Like faster, bigger. I'm gonna do 70. <laughs> Guys, I'm so stupid. I didn't even have slide enable, meaning the twitch wasn't on at all. So <laughs> I was like, why am I not saying anything? <gasps> That's so ugly. I, I'm i gonna make this vignette like stronger. Oh, and then I'm gonna have the borders as well on the side, so. I'm gonna have it slide down, but also have it zoom out. Yes, see, that's the look we need. See, I've studied this style, like a, like I'm getting a degree in this style. Okay, I think this needs to have Twitch. I'm gonna work on this off camera because this is probably gonna take me a while. I'll head back with you guys when I'm done. So I just finished the Amelia's Bastard edit, so here it is. Hey, bitch, I'm 
I'm a P, bitch, I'm a G Took that little bitch, now that bitch off the leash Lay leaving on that fucking nigga shit Take a nigga bitch and then I pass her to the click I say, see me, I'm gonna so honestly, I'm gonna rate my edit in this style a 6 out of 10. I don't think it was that good. Like I said, you're doing very basic transitions, but it's just so hard to get it right. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this style. One pro is that I think if you edit in this style, it'll bring in a lot of views. Since it is such a like iconic and well-known style, I feel like people are naturally drawn to it. I just think it's so like sharp and precise and I just love the way it looks. But there are of course also some cons to this style. So I think the biggest and most noticeable con is that it just lacks originality so many people have already replicated the style that if you also replicate the style on your account people will watch that edit and not remember your username specifically they won't be like oh blank made such a great edit they'll only be thinking about Amelia's bastard while they watch this edit and I think it's so important as an editor to have some sort of uniqueness to your account and I think this type of style as beautiful as it is when it's done by anyone but Amelia's bastard it just doesn't bring that uniqueness to the table so yeah let's get on to the fifth and final style all right so so the last style I'm gonna be doing is 3D. I would say I'm pretty good at 3D. I've hosted a lot of 3D tutorials for more like complex 3D transitions, but more like complex 3D transitions are fairly new to me. Like I just started doing them very recently because I was getting bored with my old style. Okay, so for this intro, I'm gonna do a four-sided cuboid, which is just like a rectangular cube. Negative 90 for X, ah, negative 90 for X. I'm gonna drag this into place. Okay, so it looks good, you can't really go wrong. For this clip, what am I gonna do? This is the hard part. I always do 3D. Oh, I'm gonna do the phone. So I'm gonna add my phone PNG. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. I'm gonna crop it to fit the shape of the phone. Another thing that's really like annoying about 3D is like having to do the backgrounds. Like, I don't know why, it's just so time consuming for me. I'm gonna do black and white, yada yada, and I'm gonna do vignette. So this is gonna be a Y flip. So I'm gonna have it here. It's gonna be really smooth though. Okay, here is gonna be like the pivotal point. So like right here, it's gonna be like that, and then it's gonna go to 180. That looks good, yes. Okay, now I'm just gonna do a zoom out with fish eye, like nothing too crazy. Switching to my phone because my computer is tired. I'm allowing her to rest in charge, but we're back at it. I think I'm gonna have this do like a X flip in the middle of the clip. Like it, there's a mask and then it does an X flip. You know, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yes. <gasps> Should I do a shatter cube? I've never done that before. This will be, okay, so this will be in the middle of the cube. It'll be shattered and I'm gonna make it be like a mask. So let me just rotor brush that. Yes! Ah! Okay, I'm gonna increase this a lot. Well, also that's the crappiest cube I've ever made. It's so bad. The shatter looks good though. All right guys, this has gone on for long enough. So I'm just gonna finish this and I'll come back to you guys later. All right, so I just finished the 3D edit and here it is. Bitch, I'm a P. Bitch, I'm a G. Took that little bitch, now that bitch off the leash. Lay leaving on that fucking nigga shit. Take a nigga bitch and then I pass it to the click. I say, see me, I'm gonna... So I think I'd rate my execution like a 7 out of 10. I think I tried some pretty cool things and I executed them okay. So now let's talk pros and cons. I think a pro of this style is that it's very captivating and like it really grabs the audience's attention because any sort of 3D looks very complex to the viewer. Even something as simple as like an X or Y flip, it looks very advanced and it just looks really cool. Another pro that might be a con but is disguised as a pro is that it really challenges your abilities as an editor. Now for the cons, and there are a few. First, it is very, very time consuming. Actually, executing the 3D isn't really that hard. It's the thought process that has to happen before you actually execute the 3D. Like you really have to pre-plan how you're going to do things or else you'll be like five steps in and realize you forgot to do something and you have to take apart your entire cube or just get rid of everything you already did. So that's all for this video. Comment down below which style you think I executed best. And if you guys want me to do a part two to this video, comment down below more editing styles that I can try out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.